two issues. One was uh, interfering with the right of choice of the population by rigging elections. Because if you cannot change governments by ballot, uh, because somebody interferes with the uh, voting, uh, alters, you vote for X and he uh, declares Y, as happened in uh, Mubende North. And there was a man called uh, Dr. Sebuluba, who was a DP. He got 19,000 votes and he was declared the winner. But Paul Mwanga announced uh, Samuel Mugwisa as the winner who had got 3,000 votes. So if you can, uh, if you have that type of brazen usurpation of, of people's authority, what do you do? How can you discipline uh, bad leaders? The only way you can dis discipline bad leaders is to remove them every five years by vote. Now, if somebody blocks that, then uh, the logic is that we must get a solution, uh, another solution. Uh, secondly, however, there was the, 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 the UPC was fond of using killings. Uh, if you don't agree with me, we kill you. And there are so many cases. Uh, people were killed, even soldiers, uh, like uh, Lieutenant Karenzi was killed. The, so many people were killed, like uh, in the Mbarra area, the uh, Ruabatoto, the father of uh, Nyakeiru, uh, like uh, one of our children, Kamu, Kam, the, the son of uh, one of uh, our people, like the Ben Chuanuka, that was during Yamina's time. Uh, so many killings in Ruero, those dead bodies which you, you see. So the, the combination of the two was unacceptable. No electoral uh, accountability and extrajudicial killings. Mm. Of course, the UPC was also playing a fool's game because really for us what we wanted was to also change the army. Uh, and by being so stupid, they provided us an opportunity to, because we, to, 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 to go for the radical solution. But if they hadn't, uh, if they had not uh, blocked the elections, if they had uh, not killed people, then we could have used maybe soft methods to eventually do the same. Not really, initially. I didn't, but I knew he wanted me to get out of Uganda with the children and that he would not come with me on that journey. So that was quite traumatizing because I didn't want to go out in the first place. And now to think that I'm going out alone with such very young children, it was truly traumatizing. Well, I didn't discuss with them. I was just discussing with the fighters. Mm. Mm. Are you Christians of some sort? Yes. Because you remember when uh, Jesus was in the temple, when he was a young boy, he went to Jerusalem in the temple. Uh, and then they, they, then they came, the, the, the father and mother came to see him. And then they said, your, your relatives are outside. They said, who are my relatives? Don't tell me about those people. My relatives are these ones who, who follow my, my faith. So when it came to fighting, we had to, uh, to, 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 to think about the cause, not the, bio, not the biology. My family, my extended family, also thought in that, in that direction. And agreed, some of them agreed with him that um, it's, it's okay to, to do something about what was happening in the country. Others didn't agree with it. By the time we went for 
the, the radical solution. We knew that it could not fail if it was well managed. Uh, it could fail if it was badly managed, but uh, we were sure of the management. Because you have the ideology, you have the, uh, the politics, and then you have the strategy. And we were sure that all three were, 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 were well analyzed. Actually leaving the country without him. Because we had argued for a long time whether I must leave, really. Because you see, we had lived in, out of the country for so many years. The children were born when we were not here. So when we came back, we thought that now we were going to leave at home and, and settle like other people. And, and when the suggestions started coming up that we should leave again, I was not prepared to leave again. I was prepared to go to the most remote area in Uganda and stay there and just grow food and feed my children, but not get out of Uganda. We, we definitely we achieved uh, uh, what we wanted, which was to empower the people, to give the people of Uganda the power to vote, uh, but second also to use that power to change their lives. The second part has still some challenges, corruption, leaders who do what, uh, what they shouldn't do. But since they have the power, since the people of Uganda have the power, uh, we, we, you can say, broadly speaking, that we succeeded. I think it was a truly big victory for the people of Uganda. And it came at a of, uh, at the minimum expense because it could have taken more bloodshed and, and um, it could have brought Uganda into contact with the whole region and perhaps we would have had more problems to deal with but, but by God's grace uh, this small group of, of Ugandans took it upon themselves, they made that major sacrifice. They lived in Uganda and suffered so much, but they served that purpose. And so I think really that it was God's miracle and it was uh, an achieved objective. I think that um, it's another a milestone, really, to be able to tell this story from a Ugandan perspective. Well, it's good for the young people, especially, and also for the outside world, and for Africa, to, 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 to see. How it, it truly happened, in a most humble way, but nonetheless tell the real story. I think it's another milestone and another victory and something I think Ugandans should be proud about. Well, this was a, a unique struggle which was fought with the internal resources. Uh, it's not common because even, in, even internationally it's not very common. It, it, it may be only in China maybe where you had something comparable. Uh, and a little bit in Cuba. Because in other struggles like Vietnam and so on, they had what they were calling a rear base, uh, support from outside, sustained support. But here we didn't have. It was, it was mainly internal uh, means. Mm. That's really unique, it's not common. Because I, we tend to always look to others to tell our stories, and of course they always tell those stories from their own perspective. So to see this being told now 
in our very own perspective. I think it's something you can and should take pride about. To build up the, the self-confidence of, of the youth and the Africans in particular, uh, when, when you, it's a big shame when you see uh, United Nations troops in Africa guarding Africans as if they cannot guard themselves. So here we, are, we, we want to show, the, uh, this story will show uh, how the, the people of Africa, the Ugandans in this case, were able to build a, 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 a resistance force by themselves. And then the resistance force eventually became a national army. And, and the Ugandans guard their, themselves. They don't depend on anybody to guard them. I pray that it will come and that it will tell this story, not just for our generation, but those generations to come. I think it will lay a foundation that others will build on.